Hello YouTube family. Welcome back to my channel. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day or night whenever you get this message. Thank you my subscribers. Few but mighty in numbers, you know. And God says where two or more are gathered, he's in the midst. It's all that matters. Amen. God is just he's doing a new thing. And a new work in some of us, you know, we just got to know that he's working behind the scenes. You know, it says, why are you trying to figure it out? God is already working it out, okay? He is working in your life, working through you, working through other people, and getting the blessings just coming your way. You know, you don't have to chase the blessings, they'll just chase you down. Amen. God will give you favor. He loves you and... He's just going to be, a, he's going to bless you. Amen. And, um, and I was sitting here, I was like, I'm working on a lesson right now that I'm, you know, I'm not going to share it yet until I bring it on, but I'm not there yet to share it. But God is, you know, helping me to work on it and study. And, um, the Bible says to study, to show yourself approved, uh, a man that's rightly dividing the word of truth. So I got to study to show myself approved. I got to study the word of God. And something just in me, you know, everything just in me because I studied it years ago. But sometimes you have to, you know, the Holy Ghost is there to bring it to your remembrance. But you also got to pick up the word and read it yourself and go over some stuff. So today we are going back. I love this book. To the Devotions of the Principles of First Mention and by Robert Pastor Robert Morris. And this little devotion here again. I know y'all didn't heard it before, but we ain't finished. We're going to keep using this. And somebody can get encouraged by it. Hey, that's what it's about. Uplifting and encouraging our brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's it. And even encouraging ourselves like David did in the word of God. You know, he does. He encouraged himself. So, um, I don't know how to edit yet. So, I am adjusting my clothes here, okay? I just like to keep it real anyway. There ain't too much to edit. I do, I'm do. i making mistakes here, but this is not an act. So I'm, keep, I'm getting, bringing it real to y'all, just as I am. You know. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's still warm in Arizona here. Like I said, it's still about 112. It's the same day, same video, same clothes I got on right now. I ain't changed nothing yet, <clears throat> but, um, because it's the same day, so I don't want to go in there and change clothes like it's another day. I will do that every day. I try to wear something differently, of course, but it's the same day, so I'm just bringing this quick message to y'all. I'm just going to hopefully touch y'all, uplift somebody, and encourage them in the Lord. I love God. I know. Isn't he wonderful? Do it, God. Do it. In spite of everything I'm going through, in spite of the pain, in spite of, you know, what's going on in my life, you know, in spite of not having your um, family there, in spite of my children not there, you know, I just want to say I love God. God is just, he's an ever-present help in a time of need. You know, he's always there. He, he never leaves us nor forsake us. He's always there with us. Any time, day or night. It's wonderful to know him. It's wonderful to praise Him. It's wonderful to love Him. Praise God. Let's open up in a moment of prayer before we get to the message. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this day. This is a day that you have made, Lord, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what we're going through, what we're feeling, no matter our circumstances, our situations, God, we will still uplift you and give you some praise, God. Lord, we love you today. We worship you. We thank you for another day for waking us up in our right minds to see this wonderful day, God. Help us to get out of ourselves. Help us to decrease while you increase in this broken vessel, God. And Lord, let your word just go forward, God, and, and help us and touch our bodies, our mind, our spirits today, God. will be renewed because of the renewing of our minds every day, Lord, with your word. Help us, God, to just get something out of the word that's coming forth. We thank you for the word. Thank you for using this broken vessel of clay today, God, so that I can be an encouragement and uplift somebody else in you. 
and we love you. We give you the praise, Lord, and we thank you today, God. We worship you. You're wonderful. You're worthy, God. You're a deliverer. You're a help. You're everything that we need, Lord. Help us to just reach out to you, and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me put these glasses on here. This is the book again, The Principles of First Mention. I don't know, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know what I'm going to go to. I just open it up by random, and that's how I do it, and we start from there. And if it's something that we already read, we'll pick something else. So let's just open it up see where it goes. Oh, The Word I Need by L. Pearson. I can read that. L. Pearson, The Word I Need. Let's see what it says here. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. And this is found at Genesis 15 and 1. I know we talked about Abram before, and I know we haven't read this one because I don't remember Al Pearson. So, we're going to read this again. We're talking about Abram. Remember, God changed Abram. Abra, Abraham, Abram's name to Abraham. That's what it is. Let me get my, I'm all tongue tied here. It ain't the heat, y'all. I just messed that up. But he changed a name, Sarah and Abram. Okay, it was Sarai, 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 and it was Abram in the beginning. But God changed his name to Abraham, and he changed her name to Sarah. Okay, so that's what he's talking about in Genesis 15 and 1. And it says, Abram was having a rough time. Two steps forward, three steps back. Been there and done that. Kind of rough. I'm sure you know the feeling. Between Genesis 12 and 14, Abram leaves his homeland and family, struggles with insecurity, lies about his wife with almost disastrous results, separates from his nephew Lot due to their herdsmen's strife, Risks his life to rescue life from captivity, and then declines the victory, spoils, and looks only to God for provision, which was courageous but likely stressful. By the time we get to the beginning of Genesis 15, Abram just needs a break. He needs encouragement. What's incredible is that God knew exactly who should deliver it. The first chapter of the Gospel of John speaks of the Word. The Word was with God. And the word was God. Jesus who took on flesh and dwelled among humanity. The word of God is expressed in its highest and truest sense when it refers to Jesus. And in Genesis 15, we see the Bible's first mention of the word is actually the pre-incarnate Jesus before he became human. Appearing through divine revelation, yet Jesus came to Abram personally to deliver a message of encouragement and strength. How does this relate to you and me? Jesus still shows up for us. He showed up throughout the whole Old Testament. He became flesh and blood to walk and live on the earth in the New Testament. And today he speaks encouragement into our lives and reveals himself as our protector and abundant provision. You may be experiencing a season that is staring up strife, excuse me, staring up fear and challenging your fate. You may need an infusion of encouragement or reminder that Jesus desires to show up and reveal himself to you, maybe even in ways you've never seen him before. As you reflect on Abram's journey, know that your challenges don't disqualify you from fulfilling God's promises for your life. Often in the midst of trial is exactly when Jesus shows up. Amen. And it's saying here how Abram had he went through a lot of things during that time and during that season when God was bringing him out. He's going through a lot of things. He had to just he had to leave his country. Just imagine you with all your people in the same country and you have to get up and leave. But he didn't, he listened to God, he obeyed, and he, and he left. And in the meantime, God blessed him. But on the way there to the land he was supposed to go to, um, 
there was troubles. There was strife. There was going, there was divisions and, and he had to deal with his nephew a lot. I mean, he was dealing with a lot going through that. Um, his wife, he had to lie about her, not being his wife, but being his sister. So that, that king, that king of Egypt, that king that came through, wouldn't desire her. You know, he had to lie about that. So it's like he was going through a lot. And then dealing with the whole tribe and all that, as a lot of stuff he was going through. But he had to look to God, who was his help. And there's a lot of times we as Christians, we go through a lot every day. Uh, whether it's financial problems, whether it's problem with our children, whether it's problem with our young adults, whether it's problem with our in-laws, our husband, our wife, uh, you know, there's problems we're going through, whether it's sickness and disease. I mean, we're going through a lot on this earth, and it's like God says the race is not given to the swift, but to those that endure to the end. And so we got to go through the fire, through the storms, through the floods, and knowing that God is with us. Like he said, he will never leave us nor forsake us, nor will he give us no more than we can bear. And we know that Abraham was a father of many nations. And when, when, he, and, and when he was talking to God, uh, he was just showing him to look at those sand. And he can you number it? And he couldn't number. Of course, nobody can count the sand, the grains of sand. But he said that's where his generation was going to be like. You know, just many, many people coming through this one man. And Abraham, was just, he was as faithful. Even during his, his trial, going through, I mentioned it in here, but I'm just going back for a minute, uh, how he was going to give up his only son for God. He loved the God so much that he was going to give up Isaac. I mean, he had two sons, but Isaac was a chosen one. Ishmael was the one that came from the um, concubine, or the one, the woman. And then um, the other woman, y'all know what I'm talking about, that went with Sarah, and she got to sleep with her handmaiden or it's another word for it which is today y'all know what i'm talking about but anyway his he wasn't a chosen ishmael wasn't a chosen one isaac was the chosen one and so remember how he had told him to take his only that child up there to the mountain the chosen one to sacrifice him and abram went up to the mountain i mean he was going to sacrifice he was going to sacrifice his son for christ that's how much he loved the god he was willing to give up his son but then, as he was going to give him up and sacrifice him, there was a ram caught up in a bush. Isn't that something how God, is, in a time of need and trouble, we know that God is there carrying us and he give us a ram in a bush? I love saying it because there's always a ram in a bush. When the gas prices are going up now, God will make a way for you to have gas to get back and forth. You know, it might not be what you want, but God will make a way. Amen. He always make a way out of no way. You wonder where your next meal come. People wonder where their next meal come from. How I'm going to feed these kids. How am I going to pay my rent? I got a light bill due. The baby knew, uh, need a new pair of shoes and a gas bill too. But Jesus said he'll work it out. I love that song. Jesus will work it out if you let him. Amen. So we are going through, just like Abram went through, People went through back in the days, but God says, I'm the same God today, yesterday, and forever. And if I did it before and brought you out of situations and circumstances that you even put yourself in, I can do it today. I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The same God. So back then I was doing miracles and he's still working miracles in our life. He's still working it out every single day is a day to be grateful and thankful for what God has brought you out. And that's what Abram was doing. He was just thanking God. Through all the stuff he'd been through. That he, he didn't lean to the left or to the right. He just stayed focused on God. And he looked for God for his provisions. For what he needed. And God came through. Even though things were falling down all around him. Like we go through stressful things happening. Worrying about our past. Worrying about our sickness. Worrying about relationships. Worrying about money problems, worrying about my brother, my sister, my mother, my father. Worrying about all this other stuff. Worrying about where we're going to lay our heads, where we're going to live when you're homeless and ain't got nowhere to go. God takes care of all that. He even make a place for you to lay down. Even in, when, when all hell is breaking loose, God will bring you peace. Isn't that wonderful knowing that you can have peace 
when all hell is breaking loose, when things are not going right, looking right, God is working behind the scenes. Trust him. He's working it out. He, what the devil tried to make for bad, God is going to turn it for good and for in your life. You just got to trust him. Endure through the hard times, not just through the good times. Not when everything is just going good, but endure through the bad times. Say, God, I thank you no matter what, and I still give you the praise. Though you slay me, like Joe said, I love that, yet will I serve him. Amen? God is good. So we know that, and then, then in here, with a word I need, God will speak to you in a time of need, God will bring a word spoken in due season. Don't you know when you're going through something, somebody will come along and give you a word? You can pick up your Bible and there's a word for you. And you're sitting there in the thoughts and something will come on TV. There's a word for you. Somebody will call you on the phone to encourage you. Don't even know what you're going through. There's a word there. Everywhere you look around, God is showing you and giving you encouragement and helping you. Why? Because you are the sheep and he's a shepherd and he's a good shepherd. He's not a hireling. He's watching over his sheep. He's protecting you and loving on you and, and showing you everything you need that he can do it. He is Jehovah Jireh, your, sub, your, your provider. Whatever you need, God can provide it. Just trust in him and believe in him and he will bring it to pass. You don't know how. You don't know where it's coming from, but through men, God works to get what you need to you. Amen. He would do that. He would do that for his children. He loves you. And it says, the first chapter of John, I'm just speaking on the John. He's talking about the word was with God and the word was God. And it said, in the beginning, God was, it was God. In the beginning, the word was God and the word was with God in the beginning. It was him. He came down in the form of a man. As Jesus and walked the earth and came down and felt our infirmities, felt what we go through, but he had no sin in him because he could sin not. He's God. He's perfect. And he had no sin in him, but he felt what he was going through. And he knew what he was going through in his word. So I'm just looking at Al, Al Pearson. That's who wrote this. The word I need in due season. And he, he brought him a word there. And you see, the, the Bible's first mention of the word is actually the pre-incarnate Jesus before the beginning of the earth. He created himself. There is no creator there. He created himself. And it said, divine revelation. Jesus came to Abraham personally to deliver a message of encouragement and strength. He came to him and he gave him a message. And he still shows up for us today. Throughout the Old Testament, he became flesh and blood, walking among us. But he uses angels as messengers. He used the prophet as messengers. He used the prophetess as messengers. He used the pastor as a messenger. The deaconess as a messenger. He'll use a donkey to get a word across. He used a donkey to talk to Balaam. He used a donkey. He, you know, whatever God can get the word to you and whoever around to use it. And whatever you can, you can open your heart and your minds to. Because it's foolish to, to, to foolishness to people that don't understand the work of God. But we know that God works in mysterious ways. And he will get a message to you to encourage you when you are down. To encourage you during your time of depression. To encourage you when you feel nobody is there. When you feel you're alone. To encourage you when you're going through. When there's so much stuff you're handling. And you don't know what's going on. And how you're going to do this. And how you're going to fix it. And how it's going to work out. You can say, Lord... Woo, I trust you. I trust you. You're going to work it out. And as a word spoken in due season, don't it feel good when you get a word from the Lord and you know it's from him and it encourages you? It feels so good. Okay, I'm going to read this, say this prayer and then we're going to close out soon here. And it says, Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Let me go back for one minute. If I can go back where this phone won't hang up. Okay. And it says we take two steps forward and three steps back. We do do that sometimes. I have to go back for a minute. The Lord said that. So we, we go forward and we go back. Sometimes like a teeter totter. We'll back and we go forward. And we go back and we go forward. And we go back and we go forward. And that's how it is sometimes with life. 
up and down, up and down, up and down. But through that up and down, God is there with you. Doing that down, he's there. When you're up, he's there. When you're up on high and feeling good and everything's going right and you got money in your pocket, your rent is paid, you got a refrigerator full of food, you got food to share, you got clothes to wear, you got everything going good for you, you got a promotion, you got a new car, you got everything, and God is there celebrating with you, praising God with you. And then when you're low and depressed and you feel like no one cares, no one listening to you, family and turned their back on you. When you feel like you're alone, when you feel like this is no hope there, when you devil, the God, the devil then came along and just try to drag you to the ground and tell you, feeling like you tore up on the floor up, God is there. When a doctor just said there's no hope, God is there. You just got to trust in him. Because what the devil tried to make for bad, God is going to turn it for your good. Whatever it is, he's going to turn it for your good. Trust in him. Amen. That's the word for the day. The word that we need is spoken in due season. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. That's why you stay in your word. And you get that word down in you. When times like that happens, you got the word down in you. And like David, encourage yourself in the word of God. And speak the word of God over your life, your children's life, your family's life. Amen. Just speak the word of God. And believe what the word of God says. That you are blessed. That you are wonderfully made. That you are the head and not the tail. That you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That you, by his stripes, I am healed. I keep claiming that. Amen. I am healed every day. And God walks me through what I need to get through. And he'll continually do that because by faith and not by sight. Not by what I feel. Not by what somebody doctor has said. But by faith in him. Amen. Just remember that I love you. Jesus love you too. Thank y'all for joining me again. We'll come back with the principles another time of first mention and come back with a sermon from the word of God. The encouragement. There's nothing, ain't no telling what God going to do on this, this here uh, channel here. Okay. So just stay encouraged. God bless y'all. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share. And if you want to comment, go ahead and do that too. I will probably see y'all around Thursday. It's my son's birthday that my, that passed away, Maurice. And so me and my son will come on here and just um, dedicate something to him and his memory. Okay? God bless y'all. And I love you and Jesus loves you too.